taken the ball on the rise. You've heard me talk about that in other videos, but there I kind of introduced it more as a tactical tool. And I've had a lot of requests to actually go over the mechanics of the shot, of the actual shot taking the ball on the rise. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you exactly how to execute balls on the rise, and I'll show you some drills. So let's get going. Why would you wanna take a ball on the rise? Your number one reason for taking the ball earlier is to put pressure on your opponent. You're basically taking time away from them. So think about that. You're getting a higher, maybe a little slower ball, and it comes up on the rise, gets to its top, and then drops. And by the time it drops back into your strike zone, you might be somewhere back here. And of course, you have to lift that ball. You have to hit the ball higher over the net, and that just takes a little longer. So taking the ball on the rise means that you're rushing your opponent. You take time away from them. So as examples for really aggressive player who do that a lot, taking the ball on the rise, in fact, they're taking more than 50% of the ground strokes in their matches on the rise, are, for instance, Karolina Pliskova. And of course, Caroline Garcia. And on the men's side, of course, the master of that is Novak Djokovic. Of course, when you're taking the ball on the rise, you'll most likely do that very, very close to the baseline. And that then allows you to maintain an incredibly aggressive court position because the closer you are to net, the more angles you can use. You can open the court. And that is definitely another way you can hurt your opponent. In addition to being closer up to baseline and being able to open the court more with angles, you can also be more aggressive by hitting flatter a little bit because the net basically, the closer you get to net, come with me, the closer you get to net, the lower the net is. Of course, it's the same height, but it feels that it's lower. You don't have to lift the ball as much. You don't have to slow it down with rotation. So you can flatten out your strokes and the angles. And yeah, that's, that's really nasty. That's why you're using the balls on the rise. By taking the ball on the rise, you can also interrupt or mess with the rhythm of your opponent, especially when you're playing the dreaded moon ballers. Because what they really like to do is they themselves, a lot of times, will sit somewhere back here and send those moon balls, off pace, high balls back to you. And what you're doing, if you're letting them drop, you're back here as well. And that slows the ball down because again, it drops past its peak. So if you're moving up and taking the ball on the rise, you're messing with their timing. You're messing most likely also with their court position because the ball is a little shorter. So you're manipulating height, depth, and pace of the ball. And again, if you can close in a little bit more, you can also open angles. And by the way, that is just one of the many ways you can actually put pressure on the pusher. If you want to learn about more ways on how to beat those dreaded players, check out the Singles Playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. It has a ton of strategic moves on how you can beat any kind of player from, yes, the pusher to a counter puncher to a servant volleyer, you've got it all. All you have to do is hover over the QR code and you get a video explaining exactly what you need to be doing to win more matches against any type of player. And I'll pop the link down below in the description. So let's keep going. Another reason why you may have to actually take a ball on the rise is that if somebody hits the ball deep and pretty fast, you might not have the time to move back because the ball's already at you. By the time you're reacting, you're too late and you shank the ball. So that is when you see a lot of times those squash shot looking balls or people are literally sitting low like that. So that's more of a defensive play, but you have to know how to do it. Why again is it more difficult to take the ball on the rise? Simply because the ball still has a lot more pace and rotation right after it has bounced. If the ball comes up after the bounce and you let it travel over its top and it comes down, it has simply lost some of its juice. The problem of course might be that you're in a very passive court position, but to time a ball on the rise, to me, takes a little bit of experience. When you're taking ball on the rise, it has to start with your perception, with your eyes. You need to see where the ball lands. You need to see how fast it is. You need to see 
what type of rotation it has. And to compute all of that and then get your body into the proper position and maybe having to adjust your actual stroke to a faster incoming ball, that's kind of calling for a little bit more experience. But of course, I'm not gonna let you hang high and dry. We're also gonna do some drills. And these are the drills that will improve you taking the ball on the rise. So in the first drill, I'm just feeding balls of different height, different depth, and with maybe even different rotation. And I'll just ask my player to call out up when they think they have to move up to hit the ball on the rise, or when they can just hold their position. And in any of those balls, they're trying to keep the ball between their shoulder and their hip, because that is your strike zone that you really want to work with. And of course, it's your feet that allow you to maintain that good strike zone. So up when the ball is a little shorter and you have to move up to it to take the ball on the rise, hold when the ball's basically coming to you into the right strike zone, but still is either on the rise or the top of its bounce. Up. I could have said hold. Up. And the next progression then is simply to do that in a rallying format. Up. Definitely up. Hold. And then I'm out of breath. The next drill works on your racket head speed and potentially having to shorten up your take back. Because one thing that I've noticed with players that are newer to taking the ball on the rise, they have issues adjusting their swing. They're trying to still swing the exact same way with a big wind up when they're actually moving up to take the ball on the rise. And they're also taking away time from themselves not just from their opponents. By moving up, you're shortening your own time to prepare for the shot. And you wanna work on that by, yep, shortening up your take back. The other thing that you're working on in that drill is to maintain a very low and solid base. The ball has more pace, the ball has more action right off the bounds. So if you're somewhere upright here, the ball will bully you. So you wanna work on really staying low, have a wide base here, wider than shoulder width, and again, accelerate against that ball. Because one of the things that is really counterintuitive is when a fast ball is coming in, that you still wanna accelerate against it. If you're trying to just kinda of equalize, kind of neutralize the pace, you're going to start guiding the ball. And again, that's where the incoming ball is going to bully your racket. Another great drill is where somebody's simply feeding you deeper and faster balls, and you just don't have the time to move back. And you're working on staying low and keeping your bounce. So let's look at how Caroline Garcia does this drill. Another drill that really works on the low base and you have to manipulate the ball is the pinch drill. You can either do it cross court, double style, alley is good, or you just do it through the middle. But what you're basically trying to do is you're taking every ball on the rise because you're not allowed to step outside of the baseline when you hit the ball. One more thing to consider, especially when you're a little newer to taking the ball on the rise, it is a higher risk shot, again, because you take it off a faster ball basically, and if it's just the perception of that, I would suggest to go predominantly cross court because to time the ball on the rise and change direction off of a ball that you're maybe not as familiar with, that's really hard to time. And yeah, even the pros have trouble with that. Another time where you may be forced to take the ball on the rise or you're choosing to do so to be more aggressive is the return. Especially when somebody has a good kick serve. Let's assume they go wide on that kick serve and you were to let the ball drop all the way so that you can rip it right here, chest high, waist high. You're gonna be in a position where usually only Daniel Medvedev or Rafa Nadal return. And they can do it, but we wanna try to maybe take that ball on the rise. And that's definitely big time where you have to shorten up your take back. And here's a great drill for that. I 
think I pretty much covered it all. Let me know down in the comments how often you're choosing to take balls on the rise and if you're really comfortable doing it. So let me know down in the comments and I'll see you back here soon.